All right. Man, I'm ready to get to this. Are you? Okay. Does anybody else have an ongoing war in your mind? Okay. I'm talking a battle between thoughts of faith and thoughts of fear, sometimes at the same time, or it feels like it. Well, our mind is a battlefield, and most of life's battles that we're going to face are won and lost in our mind. Now, I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, I'm getting my mind right tonight. Do it. (laughs) This is where I need to be what Derek said. Derek said he's the bossy preacher. I like that. He said that on Sunday. It's like, no, no, no. See, Derek, if he's up here, he'd make you do it again. But I'm not Derek. All right, who remembers thumb wrestling as a kid? You remember that? Well, evidently it's not just for grade schoolers anymore because there's a world championship thumb wrestling league in the UK. I am not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. And it's been going on for the last 11 years. Big tattooed guys with names like Captain Carpel and Jack the Gripper. I would never compete in this, but if I did, I came up with my own name. I'd be the Thundertaker. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, those, those names may sound intimidating, but when they say one, two, three, four, I declare a thumb war. Yeah, I lost interest right there, bud. <laughs> and a little respect if I'm being honest. But listen, you and I, we're in an actual war. Yeah. And most days, it doesn't feel like it. Most days just feel normal. But we are in a war. And it's one that has nothing to do with our thumbs. But it has everything to do with the real estate above your eyebrows. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10.3, We do not wage war as the world does. So forget the thumbs. One, two, three, four, we declare a mind war. Well, the problem is, is that many of us are not waging war at all. Satan is assaulting us every day, hitting us with blows of deception and lies, and we can be completely oblivious to the attacks. And as a result, our lives are not what we want. We long for more, but we settle for less. We keep ourselves way too busy and distracted and we buy things uh, attempting to impress other people or fill a a void inside ourselves. How about we scroll mindlessly on social media, feeling left behind or left out, comparing our dull lives to everybody else's highlight reels. We do our best to pretend we're happy while a war rages in our mind. As a result, we are losing battle after battle. The good news is, who wants the good news? Okay, you wouldn't be here if you didn't want the good news, right? Okay, the good news is, is that God's word is powerful. And it's powerful to help you take control of your mind. And it's not only gonna help us, but it can completely renew and transform your mind. Now that is good news. In every war throughout history, there were key battles that ultimately determined the outcome of that entire war. The war of our mind is no different. To win the war for our minds, we have to engage. There's no other way to defeat evil than to show up. So the days of being neutral must be over. Because see, you cannot change what you do not confront. We are in an actual war. And if you ignore the battle, you lose the battle. So, one, two, three, four, we declare a mind war. All right. Well, there's several battles that we need to win. Uh, We only have time to focus on two tonight. And we're going to talk about the battle of feelings and the battle of thoughts. I can sense the excitement. (laughs) Justin, you're going to step on our toes. I know it. Let's start with feelings. Feelings. Whoa, 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 feelings. That guy is so depressed. He's trying so hard to forget his feelings. 
I don't know if you know that song. It was before my time. So I really don't know that song very well. I've heard of it. But the song I want to like identify with is I want that peaceful, easy feeling that the Eagles had. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? I got a peaceful, easy feeling. Can you sing that in church? I don't know. <laughs> we just did. Okay, I hope I have a job on Monday. <laughs> Feelings can be extremely strong, and they have the ability to really jack us up when we make decisions through the filter of how we feel. This current generation is at a particular disadvantage because they've been primarily taught to, quote, just listen to your feelings. Or you need to get in touch with your feelings. Or they've been asked way too often, well, how does that make you feel? <laughs> we say it here a lot. Feelings are great followers, but poor leaders. We should never make major decisions when we're feeling angry, depressed, anxious, or even super excited. Many times these types of feelings can mislead us or misinform us. Now, I've never heard anybody say what I'm about to say, um, but I believe God revealed this to me just recently. I believe people can be addicted to feelings. Okay, let's look at one primary definition of addiction. A strong inclination to do, use, or indulge in something repeatedly. Now, have you ever heard the term addicted to chaos? You know anyone like this? Do not nudge her. No, no, we're not looking at anybody. Enough said on that, right? Have you ever thought of yourself as indulging in your feelings? Because we've all done it, right? We know we shouldn't feel away. But right now, it really feels good to feel this way. It just doesn't have a good outcome. Addiction is when something has control of you, and, and, and at times, a lot of us can be controlled by our feelings. We say we can't help it. We hear people say, well, I can't help how I feel. Is that true? Maybe to a degree. We'll always feel a certain way about something, whether it's good or bad, but... We always get to choose our response to that situation. Yeah, this is going over well. <laughs> Feelings and emotions are very closely related. Sometimes they're used interchangeably, but they're actually a little different. Feelings are messengers that nudge us. Our body uh, senses that something's different, and it sends a signal to let us know about it. Now, emotions, on the other hand, they're more complex. They require context and meaning. So if feelings are meant to inform and nudge us, emotions are the alarm bells going off that say, yo, something's changed and you need to do something about it. <laughs> feelings and emotions are both vital. But see, there's a problem. Feelings are subject to distortion. They depend on context and interpretation. The good news is the better we're able to interpret our feelings, the better our reaction will be. And more importantly, the opposite is true. So the worse we do it, the worse it can be. But important thing to know is most times our feelings aren't just communicating, they're nudging us toward a behavior. You ever felt like that? It's pushing you. I couldn't help it. You made me mad. We don't have time to talk about that one tonight. <laughs> Feelings can make us biased about which path to choose. Ephesians 4.26 says, don't sin by letting anger control you. Now, this is interesting. Leave it up there if you don't mind just for a second. It says, letting anger Oh, that implies that we have control. Yes. We have control of our anger. Yes. Now, we've all done it. Of course you have. You've been in an argument with somebody. It's getting heated. We're getting loud. You're getting loud. I'm getting loud. The phone rings. Hey. <laughs> how are you? 
Or even better yet, and I'm not looking at anybody, so if I look at you, I was not in your car. You had an argument in your car on the way here tonight, and you're chipping back at each other, and then you get out of the car, and there's a greeter pulls up at the car, and you're like, hey, brother. <laughs> Bless God, it's good to be in church. <laughs> See, we have a lot more control than we will admit sometimes. But the goal, the goal is to keep feelings and emotions as messengers and not dictators. Feelings do not have to dictate how we respond in life to any given situation because we're not victim to our feelings. Say that. We're not victims to our feelings. All right. Now let's talk about thoughts. You've had a couple today, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, feelings lead to thoughts, lead to action. I want to I love this quote. I want us to read this together. You don't have to read it. I'll read it for you. Our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Ooh, let's go. I've studied and been subject to cognitive behavioral psychology or cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, you're saying, Justin, you've been to therapy? Yes, many times. I highly recommend it. My therapist told me one time, he said, Justin, when you figure out that 95% of your problems begin and end with you, your life's going to be so much easier. And I was like, whoa, hey, I didn't pay for that. <laughs> well, hold on. Whoa, oh, we might need several more to unpack that. But he's absolutely right. Relational challenges, eating disorders, addictions, many forms of anxiety are all a direct result of toxic thinking. God's word said it first, as always, Proverbs 23, 7. So as he thinks in his heart, so is he. See, the life we have is a reflection of the thoughts we think. What we think is what we become. So whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. If you think you can't, you probably won't. But if you think you can, you probably will. If you dwell on your problems and how things are only getting worse, then the problem's probably going to overwhelm you. But if instead you believe you can overcome by the power of Christ within you, then guess what? You will overcome. Amen. Yes, that is good news. But see, we need to think about what we think about. Have you thought about that? Think about it. They sometimes call it a thought audit. Uh, cognitive behavioral therapy calls it a DTR, a dysfunctional thought record. That sounds fun, doesn't it? Yeah, Justin, let's do that. Because the more often we think a thought, the more likely are we to think that thought again. See, it's science that when you think a thought, it literally creates a neural pathway in your brain, making it easier for you to think that same thought again. It's like walking a path somewhere and that's all you walk day after day, same place, month after month. It becomes wore down and eventually it'll be a rut and it just naturally goes there. But what we want to do is we want to use God's words and we want to create new paths. And we want to get off that path and we want to create a new one that's helping me, not hurting me. All right, so let's do a quick audit together. You want to? Doesn't matter. We're doing it anyway. <laughs> All right, put up the first slide if you don't mind. All right, so I saw Craig Groeschel do this, and uh, so I'm going to take you through just the first part, and then I've added this second part. But this first part is where are you on this scale? You're not one or the other necessarily, but you're somewhere. So when you wake up in the morning, do your thoughts tend to be worried, stressful, or fearful? Or do you find yourself, even in those same bad situations, casting your cares onto God? And believing that he's with you and he's helping you. Now, it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be one or the other. Okay, you can take that down real quick. So if I haven't made you mad, I'm going to make you mad now. I thought the thing was to bless the people. It is. We're going to do it. We have much more control of our thoughts than we'll admit. And we have way more control of our words than we do our thoughts. I guarantee you. 
you held words back today. I guarantee it. You thought stuff, but you're like, I ain't saying that. If I say that, I will be fired. If I say that, I will be sleeping on the couch for three months. So I'm not going to say that. And when we train kids, we say, you know, you can't just say whatever you want. But see, we need to teach them that they can't think whatever they want either. Because our thoughts, nobody sees those. You don't hear my thoughts. So there's much more accountability for our words. So let me pose this to you. If we could hear your thoughts, could you control them better? 100%. Just like you can control your words, you can control your thoughts. You just don't because nobody hears it but you. And you think, well, there's no accountability there. I didn't say it. Listen, those thoughts are hurting you. They're not helping you. Unless they are thoughts from God and they're thoughts in his word, they are not helping you. So we are still accountable. Okay. All right. So worried or, or peaceful? Yes. Let's look at this next one. Put the next one up there. Negative or positive? When you wake up in the morning, are you negative and kind of critical of people assuming the worst? Or do you wake up thinking God is with me and helping me, causing all things to work together for my good? Again, we may not be on the extreme here. Worldly or eternal? What about that one? Are you consumed with what you have, what you wear, what you look like, what everybody thinks about you? Or do you just normally think, look, everything I have has been given to me by God and I'm supposed to bless others with it? Well, you cannot have a positive life if you have a negative mind. Can you, can you put that last slide back up there with all three of them, if you don't mind? The, the big one. There you go. That was it. Yes. Now, if I had a little laser pointer, I thought about, you know, using a little laser pointer, but I won't do that because then I would get distracted and I'd do it to y'all. <laughs> but if you feel tension when you look at that and you're like, yeah, I mean, yeah, peaceful. Yeah, yeah, I'm peaceful. Yeah, I'm positive. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I think about heaven. Sure. Yeah. But why don't I have a positive life? Because you're believing over here, but you're thinking over here. See, we believe that we can have God's peace. We believe that we can have positivity and receive his peace. And we believe in the eternal and that God's given us all this stuff, but we're meditating too far on the other side of the scale. It's our thoughts. This is how they hurt us. So if you felt that tension, that's why, because we're believing the right side, but we're meditating on the left side. So if our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts, let's be honest with ourselves. Let's ask ourselves a question. Are you excited about the direction your thoughts are taking you? It's a good question, isn't it? If it's not where you want it to be, it's okay. Join the other 100% of us. <laughs> but if we're thinking negatively and expecting a positive life, we're going to feel empty. And we're going to feel tension that doesn't feel right. Why is that? Because we have to train our mind to do the right thing, just like we have to train our mouth to say the right thing. And we can do it. But you got to want to. All right, growing up, a lot of us were told that you cannot go swimming right after you eat. Because if you do, you're going to get cramps and you're going to drown and you're going to die. <laughs> Maybe that's a little dramatic, but it's something like that. Here's the thing. Lie. Yep. Yep. No scientific basis for that whatsoever. It's 100% a lie. You're like, some of you are like, Justin, I don't think so, Justin, because my mom told me, and I just told my kids yesterday, you cannot go swimming until. It's because we've believed a lie, and it's affected our life because we've believed a lie as the truth. We do it way more often than we think. Now, let me give you a funny story. You want a funny story? It's about me, so might as well, right? Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. It's about you. Go for it. 
Okay. Well, when I was a kid, I've always had straight teeth and I was scared to death of braces. Scared. Now, in my day, braces were not cool. And I had cool clout, bro. I was cool. And I was so afraid that if I got braces, I turn in that cool card and I have to get a nerd card. I did not want that. Another thing about me is I used to chew on straws all the time. Any of the straw chewers in here? I see that hand, bless God. But I would chew them everywhere. And then I'd fold them and I'd chew that and then I'd fold it again and chew that and I'd fold it again and chew that. I just love straws, I don't know why. It drove my mom nuts. So one day we're driving in the car and I remember my mom, she looked over at me and she goes, you know, you really shouldn't chew on straws. And I'm like, what, why? She's like, well, if you chew on straws, it can make your teeth separate and you'll need braces. <laughs> what? <clears throat> I swore off straws forever. I'm like, why are you just now telling me that? <laughs> uh, that's pretty funny, huh? I believed that till I was 22. <laughs> I was getting married. I don't think we were married yet. My wife will corroborate this whole story. We were driving in the car. She's chewing on a straw and I go, hey, hon. <laughs> Let me help you. Shouldn't chew on straws and make your teeth separate. You have to have braces. <laughs> She's like, what? I'm like, yeah, that's yeah, true. She's like, no, Justin, it's not. <laughs> and I'm like, but my mom. And I'm like, well played, mom. Well played. <laughs> Guys, we believe some jacked up stuff. Just because somebody said something. We, what, what's the one you sit too close to the TV, you go blind or something. Don't drink coffee or it'll stunt your growth. No, that worked. Yeah. Well, chewing on straws worked for me. The apostle Paul struggled with his thoughts too. Now I would classify him as like the ultimate thought warrior. And this is how he described his struggle in Romans seven twenty two. He says, for in my inner being, I delight in God's law but I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind. Can you identify with that? He literally said there's another power waging war on his mind. The devil wants to attack your mind and he wants to set up strongholds there of deception and lies. And he wants to take you away from God's healing, help and power in your life. So what we need to do is we need to demolish, this is 2 Corinthians 10, 5, this is his answer, demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take it and we make it. We take it captive and we make it obedient to Christ. It's a replacement thought. Take it and make it one more time. No, no more eagles, I promise. How do we take those thoughts captive? How do we make them obedient to Christ? Because that's the answer. I'm going to tell you how. But a big part of learning this is dealing with pain. Whenever we face discomfort or adversity, we often go straight from feeling pain to freak out. The key to controlling our thoughts is about creating space between the stimulus and our response. Just take a beat. We need to teach ourselves to create space between fatigue and freak out. Take a pause. Remind yourself, God has an answer for this. I don't have to do what I'm feeling right now. So how do we develop that skill? The first thing is just be mindful of what you're thinking about. Think about what you think about. Think about it. Romans 12:2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If we can learn to translate our complex inner hidden thoughts into something we can process and deal with, that would be a game changer. And I'm going to give you the game changer tonight. And we're going to do it right now. Number one, I want you to write down the thought. 
When something happens that doesn't, it's not good, it creates uh, anxious feeling or depressed or you know, emotional, it's something that really hurts, I want you to take that thought and I want you to write it down. It's literally like we're just gonna take it out of our mind and we're gonna have to look at it. We're gonna write it down. So it's like we're, it, it can't just live up here and never, never land and haunt us. We're gonna deal with it. So you write it down. Then, number two, I want you to read it. I want you to look at it. Because when it just thinks, sometimes we just, oh no, 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 no. Telling it no is not enough. Telling it no is not enough. We have to take control of it. So we write it down, then we read it. Now it's starting to get bigger and bigger. And we're like, man, that feeling's kind of jacked up. Like, did I really think that? And then maybe like something like, I can't do anything right. I'll always be a failure. Then on third, I want you to say it, say that thought you had out loud. So you wrote it, you read it, and now you're saying it. So it was just living up here in Never Never Land, doing this really bad rut path in your life, really hurting you, and now we're serious. I'm gonna take it and make it. I'm gonna take it captive, I'm gonna make it obedient. So I'm gonna write it down on paper and I'm gonna go, mm, that stings, now I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna have to look at it, wake up my eyes to it. Now I'm gonna have to say it. Now I'm gonna have to hear myself talk about it out in the open. Guys, Satan wants to get you in the dark. God wants to get you in the light. When you're in the light is where things come about. Things change. So stop letting him deceive you and lie to you and let it just be here. Let's take it and let's make it right. So take it out, write it down, read it, look at it, say it, hear yourself say it. It's not going to feel good, but this next part feels great. You're going to write down a replacement thought and a promise from God's word. You're gonna write down, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then you're gonna write down, praise be to God who always causes me to win. That's how you start taking control of your mind. We're not gonna do this anymore. We're not gonna let you abuse us in the dark. We're gonna bring it to the light and we're gonna start taking these strongholds down, these strongholds of lies in our minds piece by piece and we're gonna start having the life we want. And we're gonna move from that negative side over to the positive side. And we're gonna see results and victories in our life. The goal is simple. Use small, stressful situations to train yourself to pause, think, go through those four steps, and always end on God's word, always. See, our brains are pattern recognition machines. They want the easiest, fastest way to do anything. But once we train them to take a moment and do the right thing, then it's gonna remember that. And we're getting off the old path and we're letting the grass grow, making it more difficult to, to walk in the wrong way. And we're walking a new way. And we're staying in that new way. And we're creating a way that was meant to help us. Our life is always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. So I ask you again, do you like the direction your thoughts are taking you? If you don't, we just have a way where we're going to start winning and we're going to start moving them in the way we want. We have control, and we're going to take control. All right, I want you to bow your heads. Close your eyes if you would. Now, you may be thinking, man, Justin, it's more than just my thoughts that are out of control. My life is kind of out of control. I'm not even, I've never even said yes to Jesus as my Savior. I've never received him into my life. Well, I'm going to give you a chance to do that. Or you may say, I've accepted the Lord and I started out strong and, man, lately, Justin, if I'm honest, I'm, I'm not walking like I should. And I want to rededicate my life and I want to turn around and start going the right way. I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer with me. I'm not going to call you down front. I'm just going to ask you to slip up your hand on the count of three. I'm going to count to three. And if you want to accept the Lord for the first time, or if you want to come back to the Lord, I want you to shoot your hand up. Here we go. One, two, 
three. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you. All right. All right, you can put your hands down. You know what? If you didn't raise your hand, God sees hearts, not just hands. If you want to pray this prayer, you go ahead. You pray it after me. Dear God, I know mankind needs a Savior. I know I can't save myself. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. And God raised you from the dead right now. I confess you as my Lord, as my Savior, as the one who forgives me and restores me. Thank you, Jesus. My past is forgiven. I have a relationship with you. I'm a new creation in Christ because I've said yes to you. All right, if you'll just keep your heads bowed. Thank you, Father, for those decisions, those who came to you for the first time. Thank you for those who came back to you. Father, we just are so grateful for your help in our life. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to fight these battles in this war on our own. In fact, when we do it through you, you've already won it for us. You have never lost a battle, Father, and you never will. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your love. We ask that you will just quicken everybody here tonight. Lord, that you would just help this sink in. And Lord, that we would be more than just hearers of the word. We'd be doers as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, before you go, if you prayed that prayer for the first time or you came back, there's a card that's right down by your legs. You can pull that. You can fill that out, drop it in the offering box as you go, or you can scan the QR code if you're watching us online. Or if you're here, you can scan it too. We pray for you for a full year and we don't miss. So if you made that decision, I'm super excited. Do not forget we have church on Sunday too. We love you guys. We're praying for you. We'll see you. Bye. Thank you.